Good morning. We're just going to give folks a moment to come in from the waiting room. And as a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please remain on mute unless and until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Okay, let me just make sure everybody is on mute. Easy. Great, good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Danny. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board and today I am joined by my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. All right, thank you. Uh, again, as a reminder, please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify. I will then swear in all parties. After that, the police report will be read into the record and the licensee will, or representative will have the opportunity to make a brief statement followed by questions by the chairwoman and the commissioners. Again, all testimony will be limited only to individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident. We'll start with the item number one on this morning's agenda, calling ER Enterprises LLC, doing business as Savor Restaurant and Lounge located at 174 to 180 Lincoln Street. Date of the incident, December 5th, 2021. Assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 15A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, thank you, members of the board, Madam Chair, Executive Secretary. My name is Adam Braylard from Prince Lobel Thai, representing the licensee. And uh, with me, I believe, is uh, Mr. Francois Eddie Furman. Uh, he was having difficulty logging on, um, but I think he is on now. We see yes, I am name. on. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Officer Edward Lucas. Thank you, Officer Lucas. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand? Uh, Mr. Furman, is it possible to have your video on uh, so we can swear you in? Yes, I'm, I'm working on that right now as we speak. Perfect. Supposed to go on. But yeah, my right hand is raised so <laughs> if that matters. Uh, All right. Difficulties getting the video going. No problem. We'll just give a second. You gotta full screen. Yeah. Also, um, Mr. Green, uh, Lieutenant Detective Troy might have to read a secondary report here. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and could you also please raise your right hand? Thank you. Uh, all right. I'm gonna assume Mr. Furman. I was right just gonna say, we take your word for it, Mr. Furman. Yes, my right, my right hand is raised, I apologize. Just, thank thank you. you, do you, you sort of tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, Officer Lucas, you may please proceed with the police report. About 1.49 a.m. on Sunday, December 5th, 2021, officers get Lucas and Giblin the Alpha 113 Alpha responded to a radio call for a stabbing at Savoy Lounge, 180 Lincoln Street, Boston. Also responding was the Alpha 101 Alpha, Drew and Chan, the Alpha 102 Alpha, Rooney and Entwistle, the Alpha 103 Alpha, Mejia and Roca, and the Alpha 426, Elvin. It was initially dispatched that the victim, Malik Shaw, was stabbed in the back by a needle while inside of Savoy Lounge. Upon arrival, officers met with Shaw, who had a laceration to the upper right portion of his back. The laceration was approximately a half inch to three quarters, quarters of an inch. Officers 
observed that there were holes through both both of his shirts, consistent in size and location, to the laceration on his back. Officers notified EMS that the scene was secure, and the 1A15 LaPlante and Fitzgerald arrived on scene. Shaw was brought to the ambulance for evaluation while officers attempted to get further information. According to the A15, the laceration was consistent with a box cutter type instrument as opposed to the initially reported needle. Shaw had no, no suspect description and stated that while walking between the coat check and the bathroom, he felt a sharp pain in his back and believed he was initially stabbed with a needle. None of the individuals in the crowd that had gathered outside of Savoy had any pertinent information. Shaw ultimately denied transport to the hospital and was given basic first aid for the laceration. Officers went into Savoy and spoke with the business owner, Francois Furman, who stated he was unaware of any stabbing inside of the facility. Officers requested the Alpha 906 Sergeant Whiteman to respond to conduct a code 35, number 060610. Upon arrival, officers entered Savoy where the Alpha 906 completed the documentation and spoke with Furman. Furman requested he speak with the victim as he was frustrated about the incident and commented on the fact that Shaw was not transported to the hospital. Officers advised Furman to avoid speaking with Shaw. The Alpha 906 spoke with day one detectives who advised that they would respond during regular business hours to acquire any video evidence. And uh, it was recorded via body one camera. Thank you, Officer Sorry. Lucas. Lieutenant Troy, I believe you have an additional report. Uh, the uh, second report authored by uh, Sar Sergeant Whiteman, who was on scene that night, reads as follows. About 2.06 a.m. on December 5th, 2001, Sergeant Whiteman uh, responded to 180 Lincoln, Lincoln Street, Savoir, to conduct a Code 35 license premise inspection. The license premise inspection was conducted in response to a radio call for a person stabbed inside Savoir. The victim stated that he'd been in the hallway of Savoir uh, between the main floor and the code check when he felt a sharp pain in his back. The victim stated he initially thought he'd been stabbed with a needle, but on closer examination by EMTs, it was discovered that there were what appeared to be a half-inch superficial puncture wound on his back. Uh, the puncture was slightly bleeding and, a, uh, and had corresponding punctures in the two shirts that the victim was wearing. Uh, the victim refused to go to the, hospitals and let, to the hospital and left the area. Sergeant Whiteman spoke with the owner manager, Mr. Francois Furman, uh, on scene. Mr. Furman escorted Sergeant Whiteman and officers Lucas and Giblin into the uh, entry hallway where the licenses were posted. Mr. Furman was upset that the officers were conducting an inspection, uh, inspection but cooperated. Mr. Furman did not believe that the victim was stabbed and wanted the victim's information so he could speak to him directly about the incident. Sergeant Whiteman informed Mr. Furman not to contact the victim and the incident will be investigated by uh, district detectives. Um, Sergeant Whiteman informed Mr. Furman to secure any video evidence for detectives. License premise inspection number 060610 was issued for patron on patron uh, assault and the district detectives are noted and that's the conclusion of this supplemental report. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Braylor, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may uh, ask uh, Officer uh, Lucas just a, a couple of questions in connection with the, um, uh, the, uh, the police report. Great. Um, Officer Lucas, just a couple of questions. Were you present uh, for the alleged incident? Uh, not the actual stabbing. I, I arrived afterwards. Um, so, therefore, you would you or don't you don't have any personal knowledge of the actual um, the actual incident? No. Um, did Mister uh, Furman cooperate with uh, with you and the police? He did. Um, did the alleged uh, victim refuse to be transported to the to the hospital? He did. Uh, and to the best of your knowledge. Um, have charges been filed um, subsequent to the uh, to the alleged incident? I, I am unaware. Uh, that was handled by detectives after the fact, so I'm unaware on the follow up. Okay, thank you. No further questions um, for Mr. Uh, for uh, Officer Lucas. If I may um, ask questions um, to uh, uh, Mr. Fernan. Okay, proceed. Great, thank you. Mr. Furman, a couple questions for you as well. Were you present during the alleged incident? 
I was there that night, but I didn't see the, any incident, no. Okay, and so how many um, security personnel or staff were, were uh, there that night? I'm total staff, including um, bartenders. So I had about 12, about, about six security staff or so. Okay, did, when, when you and staff found out about the incident, did you follow the, your standard operating procedures that have been previously submitted to, uh, to the board, to this board? Yes, we did. Okay, great. Um, does, that, does that include inspection, inspecting patrons and their belongings for any alleged, uh, sorry, any illegal uh, or dangerous items when they come into the uh, establishment? Yes. Okay. Um, the alleged incident uh, took place at approximately 1.49 a.m. according to the police report, is that correct? Um, I'm, I assume so, because I, I didn't see it, so I don't know. That's the time they said uh, it happened. Okay. Um, okay. Was the, was, your, was the premises open at that time? I said we were closed. People, people were leaving. We were already closed. We were in the process okay, so of closing. All right, and so you had called last call and people were Yes, I heard that. Yeah, okay. that happened. Yeah. Was, at that time, was there an indication of a verbal or physical altercation with the alleged was, victim? There was none whatsoever. None whatsoever. Nobody was aware of anything. People were just, um, you know, just walking out. Um, peacefully as it seemed. Um, yeah, there was nothing. No indicators whatsoever. And were there any issues with either the alleged victim or or any other issues uh, during the course of the evening um, prior to uh, the alleged incident? No, we had no issues at all. Okay. Um, when did you? I think you said this, but just to reiterate, when did you first learn of the uh, the alleged incident? When um, when officers, I was notified that the officer was outside, wanted to speak with me, and that's when I went outside to meet them and um and walked them in. That's when I first got notice of it. Okay, and to the best of your knowledge, that was sometime after one fifty a.m. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, did did you debrief your staff after the alleged incident occurred? Yeah, I we did have a meeting. We sat and talked and um, just asked them. You know, if they saw anything, if anybody was aware, but no one saw anything, we were just, um, we were just all in shock. We didn't know what happened. Again, uh, up until the point where um, the police officers came in, they were outside. That's when we find out that they were, they've been called for, um, for, for a stabbing situation. Okay, great. And at that time, you learned that no other, no other staff member knew of these? No. So you no. all found out together. Okay, got it. Uh, and then, um, I know we talked about this, but uh, did you cooperate with the police when, when they uh, were on site? I sure did, yes. Did you provide the security footage of the incident? I, I did. They, um, they, what they asked for, I, um, I believe I, I, I sent it to them maybe the same week or the following. I'm not sure, but yes, they did receive it. Okay, great. And then the last question I have for you is, um, to the best of your knowledge, has anything come of the alleged incident since, uh, since then? No, nothing. Okay, that's, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Fernan. That's all the questions I have. I would just conclude and, and to say that um, the licensee was, you know, when, the, when and after the incident occurred, the uh, licensee was properly staffed and followed all policies and procedures. Um, nothing occurred that evening prior to the incident that, that would have, um, that would have considered or resulted in the staff thinking that any anything further would have occurred. Mr. Fernan and his staff did not find out about the uh, incident uh, until the police arrived. And so therefore, it's not reasonable, reasonably foreseeable uh, that, a, that uh, this incident would, occurred, would have occurred uh, at the establishment that night. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Braylord. Uh, Chairwoman Joyce, any questions? Thanks, Danny. Um, Officer Lucas, did the victim um, say that something happened that night that precipitated right before this um, alleged stabbing that he was aware of? I don't recall uh, specifically what he said prior to that. He just remembers walking from um, the coat check area in the hallway and just felt a sharp pain. So it didn't appear as though 
that he had any type of arguments with anybody prior that night. Okay, thank you. And um, Mr. Furman, just for the board's um, knowledge, what is your policy when people are coming in to check for weapons or dangerous items? Do you pat them down? Do you wand them? Yes, I stay, I stay in the security plan. Yes, they come in, uh, they get patted down, they get checked. Uh, it's a full, uh, full check, top to bottom. And um, at times they they are told to um, they usually check their coat in, so there was no, nothing nothing there. But procedure procedure wise, they always get checked on their way in. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further questions, Commissioner Kern or Commissioner Saxon. I do not. Thank you. Questions for me? Thank you. Thank you all. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number two, Big Night Venues Boston 4 LLC doing business as Scorpion Bar and Restaurant slash The Grand located at 25 Northern Avenue. 25 date Northern of the Avenue. incident, date of the incident. Oh, hang on, if we could just remain on mute until we're speaking. Oh, there's an echo, thank you. Date of the incident, December 19th, 2021. Assault and battery patron employee in violation of Mass General Laws chapter 138, section 64 and chapter 265, section 13A and assault and battery uh, with a dangerous weapon employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 15A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hey, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon for the licensee. Uh, James Pollock, uh, Vice President of Operations for Big Night. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Sergeant Jason Elmes. District six. Thank you. Are there any other uh, individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Sorry, sir. Charles Kane, Vice President of Security from Big Night is on also. Sorry, I was on mute. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Detective Magoon is on also. Detective Magoon. Thank you, Detective. Thank you. And Mr. Pollock, is it possible to turn your video back on uh, to be sworn in? Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Sergeant Albanese, you may proceed with the police report. Uh, about 1.11 a.m. on Sunday, 12-19-21, uh, officers Burke and Fulham in the Fox 101 Alpha responded to a radio call for an assault and battery at the Grand Nightclub 58 Seaport Boulevard, South Boston. Upon arrivals, excuse me, upon arrival, Officer spoke to Miss uh, Letizia uh, Henry, who stated that she had been struck on the head with a bottle by a bottle server at the Grand Nightclub. Miss Henry stated that she was attempting to leave with her friend, Mr. Uh, Georgios, uh, excuse me if I mispronounce this, uh, Leah Kakis, uh, when she got into an argument with the bottle server, identified as Miss uh, Gisbelis uh, Mosquea. Uh, Miss Henry stated that Miss Mosquea struck her over the head with what she believed to be a glass bottle. Officers observed a large laceration to the top of Ms. Henry's head. Uh, Mr. Leakakis uh, stated that he and Ms. Henry were attempting to gather, gather her belongings to leave the nightclub because Ms. Henry was very intoxicated. Mr. Leakakis stated that he turned away from Ms. Henry for a moment, and when he turned back around, he observed Ms. Uh, Mosquea punching down on Ms. Henry. Mr. Leakakis stated that he did not see Ms. Mosquea strike Ms. Henry with a bottle. Uh, Ms. Mosquea stated that she was providing bottle service to tables inside the nightclub uh, when Ms. Henry became aggressive with her. Ms. Mosquea stated that Ms. Henry began to punch her and bit her left hand. Officers did observe a small laceration to the left hand consistent with bite marks, as well as minor lacerations to the face of Ms. Mosquea. Ms. Mosquea stated that she attempted to defend herself with whatever she could grab. Ms. Mosquea stated she, that she did strike Ms. Henry with a blunt object within her reach on the table but stated that it was not a glass bottle. Ms. Mosquea stated that she was unsure uh, exactly what she had struck Ms. Henry with as she was overwhelmed from being attacked. Uh, ambulance one transported Ms. Henry to Mass General Hospital for further treatment. Ambulance six transported Ms. Mosquea to Tufts Medical for further treatment. Um, Sergeant Albanese myself, uh, responded to the scene and issued a license permits violation and the grand staff informed officers that video footage could be made available uh, the day following the incident. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, Attorney Scanlon, would you like to address the alleged incident? 
Uh, yes, thank you. Sergeant Albanese, um, to the extent of your personal knowledge, was staff at the Licensed Premises Cooperative regarding this investigation? They were. And have any uh, charges been brought by either um, Ms. Henry or Ms. Mosquea regarding this alleged incident that occurred at the licensed premises? You're asking if charges were brought against them? Yes. Um, I don't know. I think, I believe Detective Magoon could uh, answer that better than I. Okay. Yes. Um, Detective Magoon, for the record, no charges were, were pursued in this matter. Um, both parties uh, retained counsel, and on advice of their counsel, um, neither party wants to move forward with a criminal complaint. Thank you, Detective, and thank you, Sergeant. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, if I may, um, Mr. Pollock was on scene uh, the night of this alleged incident, and he can testify to his uh, knowledge and involvement subsequent to the alleged incident. Um, if I may offer, uh, initially, he did receive a radio call from one of the managers when the alleged incident occurred. And the employee had stated she was attacked following uh, an attempt to break up a verbal disagreement between two tables. Once security was made aware of this incident, and by protocol, um, Boston Police Department was called by manager and the employee and patron are brought to two separate areas of the premises to await police arrival. Um, Mr. Pollock will explain or can explain that the employee was crying and told management and security staff that the patron scratched her face and attacked her. And she said she immediately reacted and hit her back. Uh, when the police arrived, they took the employee's statement and similar to what she told the management and security team, and as you heard from the police report, uh, the employee reported that the patron was aggressive, punched and bit her, and that she attempted to defend herself with whatever she could grab. Uh, the employee did admit to striking the patron with what turned out to be plastic drinkware. And the employee also told both management and the police that she quote unquote blacked out and was overwhelmed with being initially attacked. Following this incident, uh, the licensee properly reviewed and investigated video footage of, of um, what had occurred. As the board will see from the video, which we will submit following the hearing and from the initial report uh, from the employee, what you'll see is that the employee tried to, or it appears that the employee tried to break up a verbal argument between uh, two tables and without warning, the patron attacks the employee. Uh, the entirety of this initial part of the event from when the employee gets involved is under 30 seconds, happens without warning. There are no issues um, at either of these tables or with any patron leading up to this event. And the initial incident between the patron and the employee lasted only approximately 10 to 15 seconds, as you'll see. Security was stationed nearby, but at this time, it is back to the area talking to another guest. Um, again, the initial incident between the parties only lasted approximately 10 to 15 seconds, and you'll observe another female hugging the employee. There's no sign or any indication that anything was happening or about to happen. It doesn't even seem like anything's going on immediately after this. So there was no reason at the time to act by security when scanning the area. Um, at this point, Again, as you'll see from the video, the employee uh, by protocol and, or shouldn't say what you'll see from the video, but by protocol and training, the employee should have immediately reported to security and management, but then she can be observed a, approximately a minute, 45 seconds to a minute later, she's observed deliberately, slowly and casually walking around the table, turning towards the patron and grabbing the plastic drinkware and striking the patron, then walks down the ramp to report to uh, security. Again, security gets right involved and takes the patron to another area for medical treatment and to interview them while awaiting uh, ambulance and police. Obviously, the initial report from the employee about the second half of the incident was inconsistent with what she initially reported to management that she was defending herself. Uh, the initial incident was was well over and she was not defending herself when she grabbed the um, plastic glassware. Due to observations on the video and obviously the conflicting statements and failure to follow the policies, procedure and tra training, she was terminated. Um, there are no prior write-ups of this employee. She was a good employee, wasn't even a newer employee. She had been on the team for over three years with no incidents. 
So um, she very well was aware of the policies um, and was disappointing to say the least to see what had transpired on the, on the uh, video. There were 600 patrons in the venue that evening, uh, which was under capacity. They had the VP of Operations Director of Nightlife, several managers, security manager, as well as 35 security officers working this evening, which is approximately one staff member per 26 patrons with industry standard to one to every 75 patrons. Um, all pay procedures were followed. There was immediate intervention. Once they knew anything was um, occurring, medical and police assistant were immediate and um, both parties were brought to a safe, secure area by security management. Um, the event was not immediately or, or reasonably foreseeable um, that this event would have otherwise occurred. Um, I appreciate your time and allowing me to kind of explain what, what you'll see on the video. And Mr. Pollock, of course, can answer any questions he um, has personal knowledge to um, regarding the incident. Thank you, Attorney Scanlon. I don't believe we've received that video. So if you could send that over. Uh, Will do. You're able to. Thank you. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? I actually don't have any questions. Commissioner Curry, or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do. Thank you. Do me either. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you. And the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number three, Home Run Cafe, Inc., doing business as Home Run Cafe, located at 1269 Massachusetts Ave in Dorchester. Date of the incident, February 7th, 2022. Employee on patron assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hector Guerrero. Thank you very much. Mr. Guerrero, is it? Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, and who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Um, Sergeant Martin Harrison. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Miguel Montavo, head of security at home. Thank you. Uh, great, thank you. Sergeant Harrison, you may, per, uh, can you actually, I'll please raise your right hand, sorry. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Thank you. Sergeant Harrison, you may proceed with the police report. Okay, about 1.56 a.m. on Tuesday, February 15, 2022, Officers Burke and Cody assigned to the Fox 101 Alpha responded to a radio call for a person shot at 1261 Massachusetts Ave, Dorchester. The Fox 923 Sergeant Harrison with multiple C6, C11, B2 and Mass State Police units assisted on scene. Upon arrival, Officers Burke and Cody observed the victim, Robolin Alcatran Zabalaz, on the ground suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to the abdomen and right wrist. A witness known to the Commonwealth was assisting the victim by placing pressure on his abdomen to stop the bleeding. Um, State Trooper Ryan Kumbacher arrived on scene with a medical kit. Officers Burke and Cody assisted the trooper applying multiple gauze dressings to the gunshot wound of the victim's abdomen to stop the bleeding. Excuse me, Mr. Plus, Green. Yeah, excuse, sorry, I, I don't, this is not the I, report that we have. I believe, yes. Yeah. Uh, I believe you have a different, uh, uh, the, the, the wrong incident report here, Sergeant so, Harris. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that wasn't even I, I, No, that is a very different incident than we have. That was a different property. <laughs> <laughs> I have a copy of this incident report here. If, uh, um, Okay, I like you to read it, Dr. Harrison, and you can answer any questions. Okay. That's, That's okay. Yeah, I thank apologize. you, Lieutenant Troy. <laughs> um, about 12.03 a.m. on Monday, February 7, 2022, Officer Stone and Downs and the Fox uh, 201 responded to a radio call for a fight outside the home room cafe at uh, 12.58 Mass of Dorchester. On arrival, officers observed several people standing outside the above address arguing. Officers... Uh, units from District 11 were also on scene to assist. Uh, officers attempted to speak with the individuals, but those involved in the incident continued to yell and argue with the staff of the bar. Eventually, the officers were able to speak to the victim, uh, Mr. Keith Cartagena, who stated that they were that they were asked to leave the, uh, the bar, but they refused to do so, 
So some of the bouncers put their hands on the victim, Cartagena, and pushed him out of the door where he fell. The victim stated that he believed that they were asked to leave the bar because of his sexuality. The victim continued to continuously stated that they were only asked to leave because he and his friends are gay. Uh, officers advised the victim that the report would be written to document the incident, but he would uh, not be able to re-enter the establishment due to the incident that occurred. Officers then spoke to bouncer, Mr. Chris, uh, Christian Mariano, who stated that he, he did ask the individuals to leave. When they got to the door, they began to argue and refused to leave. The suspect, Mar uh, the suspect Mr. Mariano, stated that at this, this time, he, he was forced to physically remove the victim from the bar as the victim continued to cause problems inside the establishment. Mariano, the bouncer, stated that the victim and his friends had began pushing and shoving him when he was attempting to remove them. Mariano further stated that in order to avoid uh, further issues with the victim and his friends, they were allowed to leave before paying their $500 tab. Uh, Mariano said that they were originally asked to leave because they were visibly intoxicated and acting belligerently. While outside the bar, uh, Chantel Gonzalez, a friend of the victim, continued to yell at officers and staff. Gonzalez refused to leave and insisted that something be done about the incident immediately. Gonzalez con continuously put her hands in the face of officers and put her hands on officers. Gonzalez was warned several times to keep her hands out of the officer's face and uh, if, she want, if she were to continue violating the officer's face, she would be placed under arrest. Gonzalez continued to ignore the officers and as a result, officers placed Gonzalez in restraints while they were att attempted to speak with others involved in the incident. Gonzalez later calmed down and officers removed restraints. It should be noted that the victim had his phone out recording officers during the incident. Uh, officers informed the victim that they also had the body worn cameras activated. Officers were then able to bring get Gonzalez and the victim to leave the area, but Gonzalez returned and demanded the officers return and bring a chief with them. At this time, the Fox 923, Sergeant Harrison, was notified and responded to the scene. Uh, Sergeant Harrison conducted a license premise check as a result of the incident, and that's the extent of this report. Great. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Aguero, would you like to address the alleged incident? So, el de eso no se te quiere decir lo que, lo que tuvo. So, okay, yeah. Eh, yeah. So, so, get to, get past, so, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I was here for the incident. Um, my name is Miguel Montavo. Uh, basically what happened was every time we, we have a patron that is intoxicated, we take them out of the scene into the vestibule and we let, we inform them that they cannot drink anymore and they can go back inside. At that point, um, the person that they were with came outside thinking that we were going to, you know, take them out at that point and we were we were just speaking with them to say hey you can't drink no more we're going to be on looking at you oh, at that point. Oh, hello we're going to be we're going to be surround we're going to be able to you're going to be at this location we're going to be there see if you're going to drink or not next drink you're going to have we're going to take you out um, out of the establishment at that point the person that they were with the female party uh, started getting loud and and aggressive at that point the individual pushed one of my staff members and that's when they took him out of the the establishment after all this happened the next day the lady came back and apologized with the two individuals they are more than welcome to come back they've been coming back every week um there's no issue after that problem what we usually do if they're intoxicated we let them inside with a security guard next to them until we could see that they're okay to leave. At that point, if they cannot, we'll order them a, a cab or an Uber. So we do not let them out until we feel okay that they're okay to drive or okay to leave in our understanding. Um, yeah. Plus, uh, she's, she's, my, okay, she's friend to mine. And, uh, you know, saying we got a, uh, every, you know, that they say something about a uh, harassment or, or yes. Or, or so, that. but it, we got a Monday. We do a Monday sometimes. Uh, you know, gay party and everything. So you know, I'm part of that. So yes, we, I totally you know, forgot say, about that. She, yes, you know, and uh, the guy know uh, everything. Also, it's alright because it, it, they they friend to me and uh, 
all who are listening. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that explanation. Uh, Chairman Joyce, did you have any questions? Um, just one question. <clears throat> Sergeant Harrison, you, you responded after the initial um, police responded, right? Yes. And my only question is, were they cooperative when you were there? Who, the, the staff or the? Yeah, the staff or the managers. That you oh, yeah, with. the staff was, yeah, they were very helpful, yes. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? None here, thank you. I do not, thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. The board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Calling item number four, Sophia's Food Enterprise Corp doing business as La Grand Manzana located at 22 Central Square in East Boston. Dated the incident February 19th, 2022. Assault and battery patron and employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64 and Chapter 265, Section 13A. And assault and battery patron on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64 and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is there anybody with us today from the Grand Manzana? Oh, I see you waving your hand. Let me let me unmute you. Hang on a second. Here. Uh, if you could, there we go. <laughs> Susie. Sorry, could you say your name one more time? Susie Hernandez. Lucy Hernandez, is that what you said? Lucy Hernandez. Lucy, you're great. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Sergeant Matthew L. Smith of District 7. And also Franklin Ortiz, District 7. Thank you both. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Diana Hernandez. Right. Thank you. Could you all please raise your right hand? And Mr. Hernandez, you as well. Thank you. Do you uh, think, could, could you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Do. Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Smith, you may proceed with the police report. Okay. About 12.18 a.m. on Saturday, 2-19-22, officers Franklin Ortiz and the Gold 49 499 Alpha Unit responded to a radio call for a fight outside of La Grand Manzana Restaurant at 22 Central Square, East Boston. Officer John Pels, Richard Santiago, Eddie Lopez, and Bracco also responded to the scene. On arrival, officers observed a Hispanic male later identified as Francisco Angel Pablo, who appeared to be bleeding from his face slash nose. Boston EMS Ambulance 8, Briggins and Frank responded to the scene and transported him to Massachusetts General Hospital for further medical evaluation and or treatment. Officers then spoke to the witness, Edwin G. Chun Barrios, who stated that he witnessed his friend, Francisco Angel Pablo, assault the victim, Susie Hernandez, outside of the venue and then observed the DJ re retaliate by striking him in the face and causing him to collapse to the ground. Mr. Chun Barrios stated that he tried capturing a cell phone picture of the DJ suspect's face, but he only managed to get a picture of his back. He presented this picture to officers, which displayed an individual wearing a yellow hooded sweatshirt with a graphic image of a tiger printed on the backside of it. He mentioned that the DJ slash suspect told one of the restaurant staff members to erase the portion of the surveillance video that captured the fight taking place. Officers spoke to the victim, Susie Hernandez, who identified herself as the restaurant owner's daughter and person who was currently in charge of the restaurant. Hernandez stated that the incident was initiated by a group of unknown individuals who were refusing to pay their restaurant tab and were ordered to vacate the premise. Hernandez stated that these unruly patrons tried to return to the restaurant and were causing a disturbance outside the, with the doorman. Hernandez stated that when she noticed her uncle exiting the restaurant, she followed him outside, at which point the alter altercation took place. Hernandez stated that Mr. Francisco Angel Pablo pulled her by the hair, causing her to collapse to the ground and sustain minor scratches, bruises to her extremities. Hernandez stated that at this time, the DJ who she knew as Diani Hernandez, DJ, quote unquote, DJ Angel Baby, 
struck Mr. Pablo in the face with a closed fist, which caused him to collapse to the ground and observed his face make contact with the sidewalk, causing further injury. Hernandez refused medical assistance and remained on scene. District 7 Patrol Supervisor Sergeant M. Smith, the Gold 902, responded to the scene and issued a license premise violation for assault and, assault and battery patron employee and assault and battery patron on patron outside of the premise. And that completes the 1 1 incident report. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, would you like to address the alleged incident? Oh, you are still on mute. Hang on a second. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I think we're good now. Um, so the, the report, following the report, the report is basically correct. Uh, originally, I had uh, three customers inside. Um, I had cut off their, their drink and then their tab. Um, they couldn't pay the tab at the end. As already seen that they were, you know, problematic and wanted to start um, an issue inside the bar restaurant. So at that point, um, you know, we kind of just took them outside. I told them to relax. It's fine. If not, come back another time, pay the tab. I did not want to stress the tab too much. Um, when they went outside, they got really angry from not being able to come back inside. So they started banging on the door. Um, they broke the door. Uh, they were pulling on the door. They did everything to the door. Um, at that point, I'm standing at the door. That's when I initially um, called. That's when I initially called um, 911. Unfortunately, um, that night, 911 was really occupied. Um, they took well over 20 minutes uh, to arrive at the restaurant. So a lot, um, a lot escalated during the 20 minutes uh, from the initial call to 911 to when they arrived. Um, so they were outside, they had already broke down one of the doors to the point where you couldn't open it or close it. Um, uh, during this time, my uncle was there. My uncle, uh, he came to the door one time, asked if everything was okay. I told him, yes, just go sit down. Um, he was there just um, just to have a good time. Um, so I told him, yes, just go sit down. I don't know at what point I gave my back and my uncle decided to go outside. Um, at that point, when three guys were still out there, he's the only one fighting three guys. So I kind of just went out there, I'm like, hey, you know, being the, the hectic one, I'm like, hey, come back inside, come back inside, please. Um, at that point, when I was talking to my uncle, I don't know who exactly, with what purpose or what happened, somebody came from behind me and grabbed me by my hand, pulled me back. Um, I was dragged to the ground. Um, I was more so worried about, um, you know, just not getting hurt um, between what, five, six guys out there. Um, Security is inside at this point. Um, the DJ booth has uh, the, um, we have 16 cameras in the business. At the, in the DJ booth, all the cameras are there. Um, Angel, he was pretty, um, he was paying attention to the cameras. When he seen I came outside, he came running after me. Um, when he was approaching outside, that's at that point, I don't know how, but I had one guy come from the back and then I had somebody else come from the front. Um, so I um, didn't know exactly who it was, by the time I was getting up from the ground, I just looked up and I just seen Angel come and hit the guy one time. Um, they weren't, they didn't fight. It was just that one hit and the guy unfortunately fell to the ground. But when he fell to the ground, he fell face down. Um, so he was unconscious. Everybody got hysterical outside. Um, I stayed with the guy until he was able to open up his eyes until the ambulance came until I had to come back inside and try to, you know, calm down the situation inside as well um, because somebody went inside, you know, hysterical. So everybody else got hysterical. Um, and then when the police came, um, the ambulance took the, the guy. We never knew much about his condition or, you know, um, anything else after that, unfortunately. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, was there anything you wanted to add? Si hay algo que quiere decir, No, it's okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Chairman Joyce, I'll turn it over to you if you have any questions. Hey. No. Que puedo hacer algo? We cannot say nothing. I never see anything. Um, that's my father, the one that's president. He unfortunately wasn't on the premises that night. I was the one in charge that night of um, the situation. He came afterwards when the police and the paramedics had already arrived. Okay, so you said there was three customers inside? Correct. Or how many people were in total that night? 
<laughs> that's why I, that's why I said unfortunately because um I don't want to sound like I'm putting the blame you know I understand they were busy unfortunately because the police did <laughs> over 20 minutes to arrive a lot escalated and a lot of other people that did didn't even have anything to do with the situation um somehow ended up getting in it okay. um initially it was with the uh, three what, was your, what was your total capacity on this evening that night I, I wouldn't be able to recall but i know we were um under capacity we weren't over um i'm not sure if it stayed on the police report what would your best guess be I'm confused. My best guess, I'm looking into 68 to 74. Okay. And how many security do you have? We have two. And where were they when this door was being broken down and you were outside? They, they were at, um, both security were at the door. Um, now, when I came outside, I, I went through the exit door. We have two, two base doors, which is the entrance and the exit. They're probably about 10 feet apart. Um, since the main door was already broken, my uncle went outside through the exit door. I don't know at what point, cause I didn't have nobody apparently looking at that door as they should have, um, which we did correct it with security. And we did, um, go over a lot with security over that, over, after that incident. Um, I really wouldn't be able to tell you where security was at. I know they were at the front door when I went outside. I know nobody else came outside after me. The only one that was, uh, paying attention to what was going on was Angel from the DJ booth because the cameras are at the DJ booth. All right, so you had 68 to 74 people approximately that night. What is your total capacity for your restaurant on a, any given night? 70, 78, 88. Um, Johnny would be the one to be able to so tell you, you that. Say you were, so you would say you were under capacity? And you had two security guards. We were, we were right there at capacity. I wouldn't say we were over, um, but we were slightly under. It was a Saturday night. So okay. we're looking at about midnight. So it's not, an, it's, a, it's a busy night. We're not looking at a slow night. Okay. So what is the normal operation, uh, security and operations plan uh, with these two security guards when three customers are asked to leave? What, what is the normal um, operate, uh, standard of operations? <laughs> So usually um, we do have three security guards on the weekend. Oops, I'm sorry, I got my stuff right here. Um, usually we do have three security guards during the weekends, one at the exit, one at the entrance, and one by the bathrooms. This weekend we had two, which was one at the entrance and one at the exit. Um, anytime we have a situation where uh, we need to get a customer out, we'll always try to calm them down, uh, talk to them first, let them kind of just take it easy um, instead of getting riled up because that always causes more of a of a commotion. If it, that's not possible, of course, you have to get the customer, take them outside and make sure that, you know, they're, um, they're understanding what you're trying to say. Because sometimes, again, with the music and a lot of people walking around, um, people tend to get routed up and they're able to understand a little bit better outside. Okay. So whose responsibility is that? The security or yours? Securities. Where were they and how come they didn't do that this night? Unfortunately, we had a, a fail in security, honestly. Okay. Um, so um, they were, they were um, attempting the issue. They were, they were attempting the issue. Um, He's got you know, surveillance. Is he an employee of yours? I'm sorry? The DJ who um, punched the guy, would you consider him an employee of yours? Um. um Unfortunately, now he's an ex-employee. Um, he used, because of the situation, um, we took care of everything that happened that night. Um, but he used to be working with us every now and again as a special guest DJ. What do you do with your special guest DJs? What do you, how do you let them know what your expectations are as a licensee or as a manager of their behavior? Well, he's been working with us off and on uh, six months. Did he receive any training? Office. Um, I'm sorry. Did he receive any training from no. you? No, no, he didn't. Um, I feel like what the job, you know, the title job, or um, the position of being a, a DJ is kind of just, um, you know, coming in, putting on music, getting the the environment to what people like to enjoy. Um, so I didn't. 
when it comes down to the DJs, we don't really do any type of like training or any type of, pro- we don't have much of a protocol. It's just kind of like come in, play music and but, leave um, out. The, security, uh, the DJ uh, booth has all the security cameras. Um, but it's present for everybody else kind of to see. It's on like on a big screen on the side. Okay. Have in the office and we also have them right there um, by the DJ booth. So, so why do you- why Present so- where like everybody else can see. So like you have the DJ booth, you have the DJs that's right here. And then you also have the camera that's looking towards this way. Where were the security guards? How come they didn't respond and the DJ left his DJ booth and went and smacked this guy? How come the, where were the security guards to help you at this point? Um, I really believe at that point, um, with so much going on, maybe at the door, they were trying to make sure nobody would come in through the door. Um, I'm just confused how the DJ left his booth, passed security, walked outside and, and got into a fight. But security at no point decided to go and, and try to, to defray the situation. Yeah, I, I had one of the security guards tell me that they did step outside. Um, I never personally got to look at the video. I know that the detectives did download all the video footage from that night and they do have it. Um, at that point, Angel is a personal friend of mine, you know, um, from working with people so many months in time, you uh, tend to have some type of friendship with them. And I think it was just more of a, you know, like something's going on, let me see what's going on. Nobody's, you know, defending her, protecting her. And it was more of that uh, first instinct from a man, you know, coming outside and she's on the ground and she has, you know, two men that, you know, uh, hit her, what's going on? You know, I have to get in there somehow, what's going on? So I think at that point, that's probably, you know, what, everything that was going through his head. Um, at that point, I'm just trying to just escalate the issue, not trying to escalate more the issue. Um, you said you fired that me. No, uh, he left. He ended up leaving because he had about I don't, I, I remember when that happened, when the guy fell to the ground, literally everybody just scattered and ran. And I know some people ran after him as well. Um, everybody was kind of, you know, like, oh, they killed him. They, this happened, that happened. Um, every, you know, people get hysterical when they don't, they're not knowing the situation. Um, I was out there with him for about 10 minutes. Um, we flipped him over. We took off his jacket, kind of got him when he opened up his eyes. We started asking him questions. Jump, like, I jump in. Did you say people thought he was killed? Yeah. You know, like, you know how people are hysterical. Yeah. So, but you yeah. know what I'm saying? Not, I wouldn't say hysterical, but seeing a situation like that, who wouldn't, right? Um, so but at that point, everybody scattered. I know the DJ left on his own. It sounds like he ran away, but I'm trying to get on the record. Has he worked at your establishment since this happened? And do you plan to rehire him at all? No. I know he's a personal friend of yours, but what's your plan moving forward as a manager? Um, unfortunately, you know, in that situation, you can't work like that. Um, there's certain types of um, self-control that you have to take um, in situations like that, especially when you're part of the, the employees and not not a customer. So um, we have not worked with him since. Um, we alternate DJs. We have various DJs that come in and out. Um, we don't really stick with the same ones. So we've just We've, we've continued the flow. We've continued the environment. Luckily, nothing has happened since the incident. Um, but yeah, he does not work with us no more. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Commissioner Curran first and then Commissioner Saxon to see if they have any questions. Just okay. quickly before we do that, I know I saw a hand raised earlier um, from, is it Sergeant Buzz? I don't know if you wanted to jump in. I, I apologize, I was not previously sworn in. I'm, I'm Manuel Blas, Sergeant Detective, uh, Boston Police Department, assigned to District 7. Uh, Thank detective. you. Can I swear so, you in briefly before you testify? Thank you. Yes. Do, you swear, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you very much. Please proceed. And uh, if, the, if the board has any questions with respect to the uh, subsequent uh, investigation, I can speak to that. Okay. Did, what happened to this victim? Did he survive? Yes, yes, the victim did survive. Uh, the, the case was assigned to a Detective Espino from our office. He followed up with the business. Uh, they were cooperative in that regard with video uh, and so forth. Uh, as a result of the investigation, uh, the case was cleared uh, when two individuals were brought before the uh, East Boston District Court. Um, 
with respect to complaints uh, regarding assault and battery. And one of those is the, uh, the aforementioned DJ, uh, Danny Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioners Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Um, I do have one, but so uh, regarding a, a previous, uh, do you recall that the closing hour was rolled back and then it was put back into place to 2, 2 a.m., is that correct? Ms. Hernandez? Yes, sorry. Do you, re do you recall that happening with the board? No. The no. closing hour was rolled back to 1 a.m. for a time and then we put it back to 2 a.m.? No, that's never occurred that I'm aware of. That has not, at least while I've been there, um, I've, we've never been made aware of that. Maybe you could inform me on that because I'm really confused in that aspect. Well, in February, I, the record I'm looking at here says in February 2019, um, we granted you a closing hour of 2 a.m. again um, with a security agreement on record. Do you, do you have any knowledge of that? Um, I unfortunately was not here during that time. Um, I moved up here about two years ago, so it was probably during the time I just moved here. Okay. Is there anyone on the call that can um, speak to that would be um, security agreement? That that was in place and should still be applicable? Johnny. Johnny. I don't believe he's on the call, but- um. Dime. Okay, there you go. Que en el 2019 te pusieron una, un horario de cerrar a las una y me, una de la mañana, están diciendo el, el oficial que está ahí, entonces te quiere preguntar de eso. Yo no, no estaba eso, eso fue que pasó un problema en las terrazas, en, Boe, en Bohemio, en Villares, que nos castigaron a nosotros, pues nosotros apelamos y nos volvieron a dar las horas para atrás, pero yo nunca he tenido problema. Um, he's saying that that's a situation that happened with all the nearby bars during that time, um, which like Raman Sana appealed it, and they were approved till 2 a.m. again, and they've never had an issue ever since. Yes, we, th that's what I'm talking about. It, for, for a short period of time, the closing hours rolled back to 1 a.m. Okay. I, I, I to, and, and then, like you said, he said, he, they came back to the board to us. Mm -hmm. And we agreed to put it back to 2 a.m., but it was also with the stipulation that there would be a security plan on file. We had an agreement. Mm -hmm. So I, like, I, I'm trying to get someone to talk about how on this, that on the night in question, your operations were in, in conformity with our security agreement. Ellos habían hablado con usted de un plan de seguridad um, en ese tiempo y así fue que, que le aprobaron la, el horario a las dos de la mañana. Entonces te están preguntando qué fue lo que pasó con seguridad esta noche. Tengo el mismo plan. Tengo los escáneres, tengo los, los detectadores de ID y tengo los, las tres seguridad que tengo, que siempre he tenido tres seguridad. Tengo los escáneres, dos escáneres, las exit door, en las emergencias de las puertas, que las dos puertas que se empujan de emergencia, los tres security y tengo los escáneres de ID. Yo tengo todo eso. Um, so it's kind of, he said that he has the, the security doors, the scanners, the ID scanners, um, the three security guards on the weekend. Um, okay, let me stop you right there. Is the agreement, that's what I was trying to get at. Does the agreement specify three security on the weekends? See, right? It doesn't specify three, um, and you can look back on the agreement. I know that for for um, I know that that they don't specify three. He's always had three. Right, hold, um, hold on. How do you know? It, I thought you weren't aware of the security agreement. Because that's what we've always had. Like when we've always had inspectors. But we, but we during this rollback and and subsequent going back to two a.m. There's, there's a written agreement. Okay. And so you told well, me you weren't aware of it, right? I'm not aware of the written agreement. 
I am not aware. Okay, well, it seems to me that you probably should be aware of the written agreement, right? And you're right. You're right. I really should. And I'm getting aware of that. And trust me, as soon as I get off this phone call, I will look into it and I'll ask more questions. I okay. wasn't. And then, so the other thing is, he just said free security, and you said it's not free security. I never said it was not three security. I said we have our three security. That night we did not have three security. You're correct. That night we had two security. We were short. You know, we didn't I'm have trying to establish the what the agreement states. So the state that you're supposed to have three security. I'm not aware what the agreement states. If it has three security, I just know that we've always had three security, but is not needed to be to have three security because all the bars. And the reason I say that is because everywhere else around the area, they've only had like one. I mean, anytime we go into there, we are always the one that we're maxed out on security. Um, so that's why I feel like when it comes out to security, we always have more than any other local place around us. Um, and that's why I'm saying that. Not something I'm aware of. Have I seen? How was, was I present during the situation in 2019? No, I moved from a different state. And ever since then, I've been picking up the business with my father. Um, I, I understand it's unfortunate and you kind of arrived after the fact, but the business has obligations that derive from previous problems. Correct. Right? And previous agreements. I, I think you should have been aware of them and should have been following them. So I'm trying to establish and clear no, that they were followed or they weren't followed because there's still that security agreement is still in place. Okay. So uh, would you be able to inform me what the security agreement is? I actually don't have the record in front of me right now. I'm, I'm going to be reviewing it, but so mm -hmm. that's why I'm trying to establish with you while we're here okay. on the record, because I don't want to go back and make a decision. I want you to be aware that I'm trying to, established what the agreement was and whether it was followed that night. Yes, I do I understand. To give you a chance to speak to it. Um, well, after that, the security was terminated. Um, we did have a change in security. Um, and going you know, forward, you'll- It wasn't, you know, trust me, something I was very angry at in, um, in that position, you know, I'm trying to, control three people outside, people inside. I'm trying, you know, I'm, you know, irritated with security at that point as well, because they're not, you know, coming for what their responsibility is. So it's a lot of things going on at that point where you, um, you get overwhelmed and it was just, it was, it was a real long night. Um, but you know, what else more can I tell you? Unfortunately, we, it, it was. Believe it, was me, a, it sounds like a, ter a terrible situation. I'm sorry that happened to you, but you know, it's, Unfortunately for us, it's not the first time this has kind of been brought up with your, your establishment. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we tried to put things in place to really stop stuff like this. And one of them was having an appropriate amount of security on them. And we were all in agreement when we put your hours back to 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to, I'm just trying to establish that what the agreement was what you know is it what is it being followed that night and also is it going to be followed in the future i mean you know um i wouldn't be able to give you that concrete as if it was followed that night because i'm not aware of the agreement yeah but as far as after that situation i know i've been really on um you know on security head on uh, we've had plenty of security on scene we changed um you know security employees um we've done a lot of things um my father you know you being a father and knowing that your daughter got hurt outside between some men, he wasn't happy either. So, you know, he put his foot down um, in that too. I wouldn't be able to talk anything else behind that point, but I know from that point on forward, um, we haven't had no incident. Even with the waitresses, I've been really on top of them as well. Um, you know, limitations, serving, what they're serving. I'm going around, I'm always looking around at the tables, observing the tables. I never allow um, bottles, empty bottles, anything that could, be any type of danger um, in a fight around the tables. Um, so I'm always, you know, around the premises with that face, you know, hey, what's going on? So we've really been on top of it since. I wouldn't be able to talk after that, you know, before that point, unfortunately. But as far as me as the manager there, when I am on there, I'm trying to do everything I can. All right, so just in the way of comment more than question is, like I said, I'm gonna be trying to review what we have in the record regarding this and I'll be applying it in, in my deliberation of, of this incident. And also okay. it's something I've said in other incidents, similar incidents is, and it's a lot of people are saying this right now, staffing is an issue. You know, we, did, we couldn't get enough security because we can't hire enough people. And 
you know, only from my perspective and, and the way I see it, just to inform you is um, if you don't have enough staff that night, maybe, maybe the solution is to, you know, not fill to capacity, fill to a capacity that is appropriate for the amount of staff that you're able to field that night. Correct. That, that's, all, that's all I would say to that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon, did you have any questions? Yeah. Do you, um, you said you mentioned that you did not have a code of conduct for your DJ, but do you now have one? Do you, do you now train your DJs and have a certain expectations of how they should conduct themselves? Yes. Um, ever since the situation we've seen where even the person that you don't think that would get involved could get involved. Um, so before even being hired or talking, we do have a documentation of paper now um, where we have certain regulations, rules, um, hours, things that you have to complete and they have to sign before anybody goes on the floor to actually work. And I would be able to um, upload that through the email or Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Joyce, uh, any further questions? No. Okay. And Ms. Hernandez, just to uh, Commissioner Curran's point, the security agreement from 2019 is a condition on your license, so the board will be reviewing it, um, okay. uh, as, as should the licensee, to make sure you're in compliance. With that in mind, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Can I say one last comment? Sure. Sure. sure if on the, on the, on the report, on the police report, it had the exact amount of how many people were inside. I know they did go around and count. I don't know if I was able to, you know, just take a second look because I wasn't sure um, right off of the top of my head. When I came back inside, I went straight into the kitchen, made sure I was okay. So I wasn't really paying too much attention. I had put one of my other girls outside as well to look at the floor while I was in the kitchen getting cleaned up. So um, if we could just look, you know, just to take that in consideration. Well, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. And yep, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Okay, we will now be calling item number five on this morning's agenda, Fuente Cleaning Services, Inc., doing business as Bilaris Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, February 27th, 2022, overcrowding in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is anybody here on behalf of Bilaris Columbia? Okay, we will uh, take a second call. Um, we might, this is a long agenda, so we might want the police report read into the record now. Chairman Joyce, how would you like to proceed? Um, there's no one here from this license premise. There does not appear to be. We will do a Why second. A second. Why don't we take a second call? Okay. Uh, excuse me. May I say? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, yep. I, I'm not sure how a second call would, how long it would mm -hmm. take, but uh, I, I have a prior court case that I need to attend to as well. So I don't know okay. if we want to. Great. Yep. So we can, we can have the police report right into the record now and do a second call for the licensee um, to explain later. Great. Uh, if you could please identify yourself, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Sergeant Kevin Yalmokas. Thank you. Uh, were there any other uh, witnesses to the alleged incident who would like to testify? Sergeant Yalmokas, can you please raise your right hand? Do you sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed with the report. On Monday, February 27th, 2022, at 157 in the morning, officers Mirando and Shears in the Gold 101 unit on site at a Code 35 violation at 28 Bennington Street, East Boston. At 0124 hours, the officers were conducting a Code 19 as a preventative measure against potential fights outside of the bars on Bennington Street. On the night prior, at approximately 207 hours, a fight erupted outside of 28 Bennington Street upon the departure of its patrons. During that incident, a combined response of eight to 10 police vehicles between Boston Police and Mass State Police were required to safely quell and disperse the ongoing fights in the street. Please refer to P number 22008542 for further on that matter. 
on this occurrence at approximately 207 hours offices in the gold 101 alpha unit observed a greater than usual capacity inside of 28 Bennington Street, Belarus, Colombia. As a result, the officers activated their body-worn cameras and started counting persons as they exited the front door. Although approximately five people had departed prior to the actual count, 67 persons were counted aloud while on video. As a result, with a known occupancy limit of 49 persons allowed, the Gold 909 Sergeant Yalmokas was requested to respond to the scene and perform a Code 35 violation. Suspect manager Mary Quintana was on scene and informed of the violation by the Gold 909 Sergeant Yalmokas. A BPD Form 1891 License Premise Inspection Notice 026653 was written and issued to manager Quintana for exceeding the maximum allowed occupancy limit. Billard pool table license LB98754 was recorded. Entertainment license CAL13354 was recorded. Common victuals license LB99797 was recorded. That concludes the police report. Thank you, Sergeant. Chairman Joyce, did you have any questions for the Sergeant or would you like to hold for a second call? Uh, thank you, Sergeant. Um, I'll hold, but if you have to uh, log off, we understand. Um, I don't have any questions about uh, the report. Great. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Carmen or Commissioner Saxon. Any questions about the report? Done for the moment. Thank you. Then we will hold for now and take a second call for the licensee later. Thank you again, Sergeant. Thank you. Calling item number six, Arguedas Corporation, located at 30 Bennington Street in East Boston, dated the incident March 10th, 2022, patron on patron assault in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is there anybody here on behalf of Arguedas Corporation? I believe that is Bohemios. Okay. We, uh, we will take a second call for this licensee as well. Um, Chairman Joyce, would you like the uh, police report right into the record on this one as well? Um, I think we should do a second call. It's an assault, see if they show up. Thank you, then we will hold this for a second call. Calling item number seven, Cork and Tip Tavern, doing business as Tavern at the End of the World, located at 108 Cambridge Street in Charlestown. Date of the incident, January 20th, 2022. Patrons on premise after closing hour, 2.45 a.m. in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Commissioner and everyone. Uh, Andrew Upton for the licensee with me is Caleb San Cadot, who was the on manager and bartender on duty that night. Antonio O'Brien, the owner. Thank you very much. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Uh, Detective William Gallagher, if need be. Right. Thank you. Could you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. You may proceed with the police report. Good morning. I'll be reading a, a police report, which I wrote on Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. Signed Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD Lexus Premise Unit, responded to the tavern at the end of the world, located at 108 Cambridge Street to speak to staff regarding an armed robbery incident that had occurred on January 12th, 2022, um, incident number 2220023 um, Detective spoke to person in charge, Mr. Cal Caleb Sen Cadot, who confirmed that he was the victim of the incident. Mr. Sen Cadot confirmed to detectives that on the morning in question, he did have patrons in the establishment around 2.45 a.m. This is past the establishment's 2 a.m. closing time. As a result of the incident, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued a license premise inspection notice 061268 for patrons on premise after closing hour, uh, 2.45 a.m. And uh, Mr. Sengaro signed for and accepted the notice. 
Thank you. Attorney Upton, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, yes, a quick question for the detective, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, detective, was uh, staff and management cooperative? Uh, yes, sir. When you visited them the next day? Yes, sir. Uh, and did they voluntarily provide you a video footage of the occurrences of the night before? Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't receive any uh, video, no, sir. Uh, did you view the video of the activities the night before? No, sir. And it wasn't the night before. We went there on January 19th, which was uh, a week later. Okay. Um, so what, what caused you to issue the violation if you hadn't seen the video? We read the police report, sir. We went there to speak to staff regarding that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Well, uh, now I have a, a few questions for the manager. Yeah. Uh, Caleb, can you take us through what, what happened that evening? Um, yeah. So um, there was two, uh, the, the two patrons that were left over. Um, I was just going to give them a ride home. Um, it was a bit of a slow night, so I was going to get out of there relatively quick. Um, I was just about to take out the trash. Um, were they were they actually patrons, or did did you or were they also contractors and vendors to the business? Um, yeah, uh, they're they're plumbers uh, for uh, Tony and Kieran, so they um so they're 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 around. So yeah, I I know them. Okay, and they do work on the premises. Yes. All right, continue, please. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, as I was uh, so I, I, as I was taking out the trash, um, uh, a man popped in, uh, masked and wearing a hat. Um, he flashed a fake badge and said he was with the ABC, and um, he said these guys are here drinking after hours. I was like, no, they're not. I'm we're about to leave. I'm gonna give them right home. He's like, this is illegal, I'm gonna find you right now. And so I was like, guys, you have to go home now. Um, and I was like, I was like, uh, I was pretty upset with myself. I was like, that's stupid. Um, uh, I then turn around and the man pulls out a gun. And my first thought is like, hey man, if you're gonna write me a ticket, you don't have to have a gun out. And then he's like, yes, this is real. And then he proceeded to rob me. Um, it wasn't a traditional smash and grab. Uh, he really took his time. Uh, I, I think it was about 20 minutes. Um, he had the gun to the back of my head at one point. I felt it on my neck. Um, he had me open up the register. He had me take out the cash for him. Um, he then became pretty irate with me at a certain point, asked me where the safe is, where's the rest of the money. He said, there's no safe here. And then he's like, I'm gonna shoot you if you don't tell me where the safe is. So I brought him downstairs and I gave him a, a, steel, a steel box that had like a hundred dollars in singles in it. And um, he was uh, holding me at gunpoint downstairs telling me he's with the mob, that uh, we're in a lot of trouble and that the Irish owed the Italians in Providence a lot of money and all this like good fella stuff. Um, and then um, he had me uh, get up, pick up the box and bring it upstairs. Uh, oh, while he's still holding the gun to my back. Um, he uh, then made me come outside with him. He had me carry the box through our back door, through our patio, and um, drop the, the, the safe on the corner. Um, and then he brought me back inside with the gun on my back. The gun never really left my side <laughs> for about 20 minutes. And uh, when we got back inside, he asked, he had me smash uh, our landline phone. Uh, he took my cell phone um, and then uh, just 
one more time threatened my life. He asked if there was cameras around and whatnot. And I said, no, there aren't. And he said, I should just waste you right now. Um, to which I replied, I just want to go home to my dog. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, that was how the night unfolded for me. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the gist of it. I could go into further detail if you like. After, after this guy left, what did you do? What did I do? Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't call the police because the landline was smashed and your cell phone was stolen. Um, what did you do? The first thing I did was um, I serpentined on the ground and locked the back door because I didn't know if he was still at the back door and if he saw me stand up, he could shoot me or something. Then I waited about five minutes uh, in, inside the bar and then sprinted out of there to my car. Um, once again, I didn't know if he was going to follow me home, so I drove an odd way home. And then I, I call, I, I live in Malden, about two miles away from, you know, Charlestown. Um, and then uh, I, I pounded on my neighbor's door and uh, I called uh, my boss, Tony and Kieran and um, Malden Police Department, uh, who they then transferred me to, um, my, my neighbor let me use her cell phone and I made three phone calls, one to the Malden Police Department, one to my boss, Tony, and one to my boss, Kieran. And did they tell you to file a police report? So when I called Malden, they was like, you have to do it with Boston police because uh, we're in Charlestown. And um, so they transferred me over to Boston Police Department, but they said, um, uh, you have to do it in person. You know, uh, maybe because I was at, the, at that hour, I don't remember, but I know that they've said you have to do it in person, you can't do it over the phone. And like at that point, I had enough excitement and I just wanted to stay home. And uh, I, for, you know. So, you when, know I, so when did you file the police report? And uh, uh, the next day at about 10 a.m. was the first time I, saw, I spoke to a police, uh, a somebody from the police department, but it was just kind of like a rough draft, if you like. He didn't really have much to say about it. And then the next day at about 6 p.m., I believe it was um, uh, Detective Walsh and uh, uh, his uh, somebody else. So they we gave that's when we handed them the videotape or they downloaded it on a USB. Uh, and then I gave them my story. And then a few days later, I think I think this would be like uh, like the final draft. I came into the PPD and they gave me an interview. So. Okay. And after that, uh, did you then take some time off? From working at the bar and did you seek some type of uh, therapy yeah. to deal with the issues yeah I, I took um i took about 10 days off um and uh yeah i i, I spoke with a, a therapist and stuff about ptsd i was really concerned about um just backlash of that and um you know i know that i, I was just for yeah i took some time off and went to therapy um but you told your boss about all of this and you're, he was okay with that. Now you're back on the job and feeling better. Yeah, no, the, they're great. They're great bosses. They're responsible. They take care of us. Yeah. They were very, they were very pleasant to understand. I mean, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Attorney Green, I have a couple of questions for uh, Mr. O'Brien, the owner. You may proceed. Tony, if you could unmute. Okay. Uh, you're the, the co-owner of this establishment? Yeah, I'm the owner. Okay. Uh, how, much, how much money would you say the robber took? Well, um, I'd say about four grand in cash. And then the costs would include, um, you know, paying Cal for his time off and replacing his cell phone, which was over a thousand dollars. Apart from all that, then of course, then we, like we have the, um, the cost of this violation now as well. Okay, okay. Um, and is, is, is any of that covered by insurance? It would have been if I wanted to take a claim to the insurance, but I fear that if I took a claim to the insurance, my premiums would go up by a, a, you know, a crazy amount. So it's not worth taking to insurance. Uh, but still, you were more than willing to uh, 
share the videos with the uh, police the next day? No hesitation. I mean, it, it brought someone to justice that later proved to kill a person. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a crazy person needed to be brought to justice. Is, is it accurate that they used your video to track this fellow's Jeep to New Hampshire? A hundred percent. They used it. Um, they used our video plus the video of the traffic cameras in the area at that time. And they later used that information to track this fellow to North Carolina, where he was arrested in some type of uh, car vehicular. accident where someone was killed. Yeah, vehicular, vehicular manslaughter or something like that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, uh, I would just ask to ask uh, Caleb if uh, did you serve any drinks to these uh, two plumber contractors uh, after two? No. No. Um, Madam Chair, that's that's all I have. I'd just like to summarize by saying this licensee has an excellent record. Uh, it was a bitterly cold day in January where the weather report shows it was 12 degrees at that time and he was offering some of his contractors to ride home. Uh, they cooperated with the police. They made affirmative efforts to aid the police uh, and they suffered considerable damages uh, during this incident. Can I just add something there as well? Of course. Um, I just want to say that since this incident, we've put new protocols in place. Um, the doors are locked at 2.30. <laughs> um, you know, trash goes out before 2.30. There, the door does not open again until the bartender leaves. The door was open past 2.30 this time um, in this incident. Also, um, uh, we have, you know, panic buttons installed, that kind of stuff for, for robbery reasons. But, um, you know, we've, we've had a meeting with all the staff and we can, um, we just like to ask the board for some leniency in this, in this instance. I mean, we had no hesitation in giving the video to the police, even though it was incriminating that we had people in the bar that we should not have had 15 minutes after the time we should not have had them there. Uh, we, 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 we would still offer no hesitation in doing the same thing again if it was incriminating video we were giving you for the better good. And, and just to be clear, the door was open uh, because it was taking out the trash. Yeah, I mean, if, if the board would look at the video, they will see that there was no drink served past two o'clock. There was people casually leaving from two to 2.30. Two the two people that were left there were sitting there finishing their drinks and they were ready. You know, there was no sign of anyone getting another drink past two o'clock. And the bartender was obviously cleaning up. I mean, he was putting up chairs. He was sweeping. He was, he was, get, get, he was, get, he was all. And just to be clear, even if the door was locked, if someone banged on the door and showed a badge and said they were the, with the ABCC, you'd let, you'd probably let them in again. True. Okay. Yeah, but they would have to show a badge. Now that, that, that is in the new protocol. Right. There would have to be two of them. <laughs> and uh, Madam Chair, we, we can submit this video if the board cares to view it. Um, I have no questions. I just one comment. I'm really sorry for your ordeal. It sounds absolutely frightening. Um, and I appreciate your cooperation. I don't have any other questions or comments. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? No, nothing to add from me. Thank you. Glad you're okay. No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. The board will take this under advisement as well. And thank you for being with us this morning. Calling item number eight, Guzman LLC doing business as Medallo, located at 411 Chelsea Street in East Boston, date of the incident, February 27th, 2022, inoperable rear fire exit in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.06a. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Oh, thank you. I'm gonna ask you to unmute and you may please identify yourself. <clears throat> yep, I see you with a raised hand. Is that Luis? Could you un unmute yourself? Here we go. Could you please identify yourself? Uh, Luis Maldonado. Luis Maldonado. Great. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Right. Amanda, thank you. 
Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Detective William Gallagher, if need be. Thank you. Could you all please raise your right hand? Uh, Mr. Maldonado, could you please raise your right hand? Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. You may proceed with the police report. Good morning. I'll be reading again from police report, which I wrote on Sunday, February 27, 2022. Charging Detective William Gallagher, Detective Reddy Hernandez, assigned to the BPD license permission unit, conducted a license permission inspection of Modalo located at 411 Chelsea Street in East Boston. While inside the premise to review the restaurant's licenses and permits, detectives observed that the establishment's rear fire exit was blocked by a table and chairs. When detectives attempted to open the double doors, they were unable to, to open them. It was discovered that on the exterior of the double doors, an adhesive tape uh, used to keep the cold out uh, had frozen and caused the doors to remain shut. Detectives brought this to the attention of the person in charge, Mr. Luis Maldonado. Mr. Maldonado immediately corrected the situation as a result of what detectives observed. Sheriff Detective Gallagher issued license permits inspection number 060967 for an inoperable and blocked fire emergency exit uh, with tables and chairs. Mr. Maldonado signed for an accepted notice, I believe, in this packet. And we did include a couple of pictures of the, uh, the, uh, the doors, how they were, how we found them that night. So. Thank you, Detective. Mr. Maldonado, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, yes. Um, I was really surprised, you know, uh, that day I, I been with him with all, all lights us, we do it together. And then uh, I don't know that my, my DJ, he put one table completely right, right on the side, the access door. And I was completely, I was just really slow day. I don't check on the back. And then when I was go with, uh, with, uh, with Mr. O on the back side to my business, I saw that the table in there and then I told my DJ, why you have a table right here? That table is not supposed to be there, blah, blah, blah. I told him that you can't have a table there because that's the exit door. And then when I when I pushed the door, I did. I pushed the door, I told you, trying to explain to him that's the exit door. And when our door was locked and then have a tape, there's no like tape, like take like a simple tape for the other side and that was a really really cold weather and then they get frozen and then we can't the door that came open but we fixed it right away i did i fall in, i fall in for the other side we go for the other side and then we fix the door right away great thank you mr maldonado um chairman joyce did you have any questions i don't have any questions thank you and then uh, I, I have another question another question too in my um, in my um, copy, it doesn't say violation. They say no violation, and then uh, what I received, they say violation. I don't I don't know who did that without my sign. Uh, I'm not sure what what you're referring to. No, the the board has not yet voted on whether there's a violation or not. Oh, okay. Yep, that that will happen following this hearing on Thursday. So that's when the board decide whether or not there's a violation. But again, I I. I work with my DJs, no tables and exits. We have a two exits door. So I always keep your eyes, I always be in the back. But that day I was so slow and I was slaying like 30, 35 people, I think it is. It's really slow. And then uh, they have that door, but that thing doesn't happen anymore. And I keep your extra eyes on it and make sure exit doors working too as well. Great. Thank you. Um, Commissioner, current Commissioner Saxon, did you have any questions? for me thank you i'm good thank you great i, I see what he's saying on the um license permits inspection notice both boxes are checked off violation and no violation i think that's an error oh interesting okay violation is actually circled there they have my name too in there so like, and again now i got, oh, got i'm here I'm here, but my doesn't say violation. They say no violation. I know, but then the, the word violation is circled. Yeah, but I need to it sign. Doesn't it. it doesn't matter. We, we just, we're going to hear Thank it today you. and vote Thursday. Thank you very much. Yes. Right. Apologies for any confusion there. Thank you. And uh, if there are no further questions from the board, then the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank, Thank you. you.
Okay, calling item number nine, Sabin Restaurant LLC, doing business as Sabin Hill Bar and Kitchen and Ghost Pepper Taqueria, located at 112 Sabin Hill Ave in Dorchester. Date of the incident, March 2nd, 2022, blocked fire exit in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.06a. <laughs> Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Frisco DeCanto, present. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Thank you, William Gallagher. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Detective Hernandez, if needed. Thank you very much. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Sergeant Detective Gallagher, you may proceed with the police report. Yes, good morning on 3 2 2022 at 10 12 p.m. Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez signed to license premise unit conducting a license premise inspection of ghost pepper at 127 left. Side of the premise, detectives observed the rear fire exit to be blocked by furniture. Detectives brought this to the attention of the manager, Angelique Johnson, who stated she would move it immediately. As a result, detectives had observed Sergeant Gallagher issued license premise. Inspection notice number 060969 to the ghost pepper for the blocked fire exit. The notice was signed for and accepted by Ms. Johnson. Attached to the report is a, uh, a picture of the rear fire exit as we found it that evening. That's essentially it. Sorry, I'm on mute. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, well, Mr. Docanto, would you like to address the alleged violation? I've uh, been been made aware of it. Our staff has been spoken to and everyone's been retrained not to put chairs in the hallway leading to the exit door. Great, thank you. Uh, I will turn it over to Chairman Joyce if she has any questions. Uh, thanks, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. None for me, thank you. Great, thank you very much. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 10, Omni Boston Seaport Entertainment, LLC, doing business as Omni Boston Hotel at the Seaport, located at 450 Summer Street, dated the incident March 8th, 2022. Service of alcohol to persons under 21 in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 3434A, 416464A in Boards Rule 1.08F, and disturbance by patrons in front of premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, uh, Mr. Green, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, with me this morning is Michael Jorgensen, who was the manager of record at the Omni, uh, as well as uh, Brandon. Um, I hope I get this right, Arkelian, who's the uh, Director of Loss Prevention, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Detective William Gallagher, if need be. Thank you very much. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you very much. Detective Hernandez, you may proceed with the police report. Good morning. Again, I'll be reading from police report, which I wrote on a Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. Sergeant Detective Willem Gallery and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD license crime machine that responded to Coquette located at 450 Summer Street to speak to staff regarding a disturbance incident that had occurred on uh, March 5th, 2022. Uh, refer to MSP report 2020F100851. Detective spoke to the person in charge, Mr. Brian Callahan, who confirmed that he was aware of the incident. Mr. Ha Callahan informed the detectives there had been a group of five patrons who were escorted out of the establishment because they were causing a disturbance in the restaurant. While being escorted out of the hotel lobby, several of the patrons um, assaulted hotel staff. Three out of the five patrons remain on scene and were identified after as being under 21 years of age. Mr. Callahan said that the Harmony Hotel could provide video of the incident. Mr. Callahan further stated that the patrons had provided uh, Coquette staff identification, stating they were over 21 years of age. 
Mr. Callahan confirmed that he had, had served alcoholic beverages, had, they had been served alcoholic beverages in the establishment. As a result of the incident, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 0243313 for service of alcoholic persons under 21 years of age and for disturbance by patrons in front of premise. Mr. Callahan signed for accepted notice to be further investigated by the PPD license permit unit. That's all. Thank you. Attorney Quilty, would you like to address the alleged incident? If I may, uh, I'd first like to just ask uh, Sergeant a few questions. I may. Thank you. Um, Sergeant, your, uh, the re incident uh, report indicated the police were called, yes, by whom? It doesn't say, can we presume that that was the staff of the uh, hotel? Yes. It, it appears that staff at the hotel made the initial call. Is that correct? Uh, we don't know that, sir. That we. Uh, we're alerted to this report by the Mass State Police. So uh, I'm assuming that is correct, but uh, we have no knowledge. Yeah. Okay. And just on that topic, you also, given that it was a couple of days later, would have no personal knowledge of any service of alcohol to anyone, underage or overage. The only uh, correspondence we have is from talking with the staff that confirmed the allegations, but we do not have any first-hand knowledge, correct? Yeah. Okay, so again, I just, just to be clear on the timing, you you reported a couple of days later based on a an earlier report by the state police. Correct, sir. And, and if I could just say, and Madam Chair, I, I have a state police report, but it's not the same number as the one which is there in are the, two, I believe. Ah, there are two. Okay. There, is a, there is a second report. I have both of these. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, Brent. I have been able to identify that the people were under 21 years of age, sir. Well, that, my, my question would be how, how, how did that occur? Because the report I have doesn't indicate any. Correct. You don't have the report, sir. Yeah, I know. I, I, I do want to make I it. I, I, I didn't even know there was a second report either, sir. Okay. Okay. Because in reading this, what I have. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's why we ended, we ended up discovering there was a second report, sir. And. Okay, so the somebody within the state police made a determination that these people were underage. Is that correct? Yeah, at the time, yes. At the time, at this time, yeah, they they were aware, and we we found out from that second report that they were under of, underage. Okay, I, I mean, just it leaves a little bit makes it difficult to defend the situation when. We don't know, you know, what 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 the allegation was. I don't know whether anybody was shown an ID. Was there a picture of an ID? Do we know what? I mean, I, we know nothing about it. Yeah, I apologize. You don't have that. No, I, I no, it's not your fault. I just I'm just <clears throat> suggesting it's a little bit tough to, yeah, you know, defend something I, when you don't have. Well, I think their, tes their, their testimony was that they were shown IDs. That's what Mr. Callahan informed us. Hotel told us that. Well, no, no, I understand. Yeah. He said that all these people were ID'd. Right. I don't, yes, don't the state police ID, and I believe they had to call parents to come pick some of them up because okay. of their ages and their level of intoxication. Okay. That was that second report that Detective Nance was talking about. I understand, but Mr. Callahan didn't suggest that they were underage. He suggested they were carded. He suggested, he told us they were carded. Right, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I appreciate that, and we understand, you know, these things. It's a little confusing when you have two agencies involved, so... Uh, Sorry for that, but um, we just want to, if I may, before um, Mr. Jorgensen, who was the manager, and uh, Mr. Arkelian uh, testify, th there was indeed an incident. Um, they responded, uh, their staff called, it was the state police because this is Massport property. Again, a little bit of confusion over uh, jurisdictions, but in any event, uh, our knowledge of it ended when we cooperated with the state police and because these people had started a disturbance, that's what led the establishment's attention to them. It was not anything to do with the, if you will, their service, but rather on the way out, they caused a disturbance and staff called the police and stood by and assisted the police at that time. Um, so we, we don't have any personal knowledge of anybody's identification being false. All we can tell you is that all of these people were checked uh, indeed, there was a disturbance, which is why we called in the first place. Um, and um, again, we, we, we think that the staff did everything 
proper and correct in the circumstances. Um, and, and subsequently ourselves found out that there was this allegation of underage. Um, so uh, again, I, if I may have um, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry again for the name, Arkelian. Yes, uh, just, you're out of money. Just state your name for the record. You've been sworn in already. Uh, uh, first name is Brandon, last name Arakalian, which is spelled A-R-A-K-E-L-I-A-N. Okay. And are you familiar with the circumstances described in the Boston Police Report? Yes. Okay. And do, do you can you describe to the board uh, in general terms what occurred and what your staff did as a result? Uh, so that evening, they the five patrons were I were carded. I guess you could say ID'd. Um, once one of them became disruptive, they were asked to leave one of the outlets. And at that time, security was notified that uh, the, you know, these people were disruptive. Security responded. And as they were leaving, they're actually in front of the um, hotel on the sidewalk. Uh, they, on their way out, like was, was brought to the, uh, was just testified to before, they, um, an altercation occurred between uh, one of the staff here and one of the patrons. Okay, and were the were the police called at this point in time? Correct. The uh, security here had called uh, for the state police to come and respond due to the altercation that was taking place in front of the hotel. Okay, and and did the state police respond, and did your staff cooperate with them? Yes. Okay. And um, what was it subsequent to this that the discovery was made that there was an allegation of underage service? Yes. And uh, do, to your knowledge, were these people all carded? Yes. And were you ever presented with any uh, proof, if you will, or evidence that there was some um, you know, uh, un underage activity involved in this circumstance? No, okay. not until the, after the police response. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, sir. And just as a result of this incident, uh, what have you done vis-a-vis -vis the staff of your pouring establishments inside the hotel? So uh, moving forward, we've been in communication with the licensing unit, Boston Police, uh, as for they've offered to provide fake ID training for our bartenders and servers. So it's our intention, we're in talks right now to make, have that scheduled. It's our intention to have uh, management as well as all bartenders and servers and people that are host or hostess to have them trained in how to spot a fake ID. Um, we've also looking into investing into portable handheld ID scanners to keep a record of who's who comes in and how people are identified. Um, we also have worked with the police to conduct walk and talks through the property. So immediately after this happened, um, Thursday, Fridays and Saturday nights, uh, the police will come through, check in with the front desk, uh, check in with the host stations at both uh, Coquette and uh, Sporting Club. Um, they'll spend a few minutes on property, maybe return uh, before around 2 a.m. Uh, so we're trying to be proactive as possible, inviting the police in uh, to help us out. Um, in fact, uh, we've also enhanced communication between the outlets in between uh, within the building. So if someone is asked to leave one outlet, we wanna make sure the other outlet knows. Uh, and we try to put the outlets on alert if there's something going on in the neighborhood. For example, uh, last weekend we had Harpoon Fest uh, right down the street and the outlet managers here and the staff were notified that look, uh, this is, uh, Harpoon Beer Fest is going to be taking place all day. You may encounter patrons that have been to that venue previously. They're going to try to get in and, and be served. So we try to be as proactive as possible when it comes to even things like that. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. The board may have some questions. I don't know, Mr. Jorgensen, as the manager of, of the overall hotel property, do you have anything to add? I know you are the manager of record. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the, the only thing I would say is that um, today, the uh, these kids can get uh, fake IDs that look exactly like their real IDs. And so any help we can get from the police and the Liquor Commission, that was the first step we took was to reach out to them so that they can help us to identify them. They're very, very close. It's And when you're busy, it's very hard to, to um, you know, they our, our bartenders did ask them for ID. It was, it was a fairly busy night. We weren't full, but it was a fairly busy night. So anything, we, any help we can get will help us moving forward. 
and you indeed did reach out uh, through Mr. Arkelly and to the Boston Police for that kind of assistance. That's correct. Okay, and you have these new procedures in place. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now the commissioners, uh, the chair, the commissioners may have some questions for you. Did you reach out to the local district captain or to our license premise unit? License premise unit. Okay, so wait, Sergeant. Wait, wait. Yeah, we're, 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 yes, ma'am. We're we were talks with them. We're trying to get some, something developed. Okay, I appreciate that. I don't have any further questions, commissioners. Do you? Not for me. Thank you. For me. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you all. We'll take this under Thank advisement. You. Calling item number 11, McCarthy's of Boston, doing business as the Pudding Stone Tavern, located at 1592 Tremont Street in Roxbury. Date of the incident, March 14th, 2022. Persons under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34A, 34C, and 6464A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, Henry Watch. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Ma'am. Thank you. Uh, and are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Detective William Gallagher, if need be. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. I do. Thank you. Detective Fernandez, you may proceed with the police report. Well, I'll read again from a police report, which I wrote on Monday, March 14, 2022. Sharon Detective William Gallagher, Detective Reddy Hernandez, assigned to the BPD license permit unit, conducted license permit inspection of Pudding Stone, located at 1592 Tremont Street in Boston. While inside the establishment, detectives observed a table of four patrons drinking alcoholic beverages. Detectives noticed that these patrons looked young and asked the patrons to produce identification to confirm their ages. All four of the Individuals said that they were over 21 years of age and produced various forms of identification, saying they were all over 21 years of age. Uh, detectives were able to confirm that three out of the four patrons had valid driver's licenses and were of age. The fourth patron later identified as Gabriel Cahill, initially provided detectives with the New Jersey driver's license, which contained Mr. Cahill's name but displayed a date of birth, which made it appear as though he was over 20, 21 years of age. Detectives used a license verification program which confirmed the driver's license provided by Mr. Cahill was indeed fraudulent. A fraudulent New Jersey driver's license was confiscated by detectives. Mr. Cahill then produced his valid New York driver's license, confirming he was under 21 years of age. Staff at the Pudding Stone stated that they, they had used a license verification program to scan all the licenses. Detective Hernandez scanned Mr. Cahill's fraudulent license using the establishment's license verification machine and their machine also confirmed that the license was fraudulent. Mr. Cahill will be summoned into court for persons under 21 possession of alcohol and possession of fraudulent identification. Detectives brought this to the attention of the person in charge, Ms. Rachel Hohen. As a result of what detectives observed, sorry, Detective Gallagher issued license verification inspection notice uh, 25686 for a person under 21 in possession of alcohol and premise Ms. Hohen signed for Accept the notice. So, thank you, Mr. Walsh. Would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, yes, on, on the, the the night in question, uh, it was a really quiet uh, evening at the bar. I think there was only um, six people in on premise at the time. Um, we had purchased a ID science um, verification identity uh, verification machine. And um, the, the doorman did run the four gentlemen that came in, um, the, um, their IDs through the machine. And he said that they all came up, that they were um, active and, and valid. Um, and it's when the officers came in and asked the, the four gentlemen for their um, um, IDs. When, when the... the, the, the uh, Mr. Cahill produced the the fake ID first that stated he was over 21. And then he he, he had, um, when we ran that through the machine, it, it showed up that it was negative. We, I can show you all, any any of the, um, we take it seriously that um, 
fake IDs and we are in a, a student area. These are all the, the IDs that we have um, confiscated. We can't get any, there's a, a whole stack of them in the last few months um, from various different states. Um, and we take it very seriously. And, and with the ID scanner, it's we 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 have um, a subscription that it's updated every month to, to catch because this nowadays the, the, the students and the younger people they're getting fake IDs from uh, on the internet and they are all they all look very 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 good and we have a doorman every every night of that we're open. And um, we, but I think the staff and the doorman were very um, uh, cooperative with the officers when they did come in. And, and when I, so I, I, we, we are doing every, everything in our power to stop anybody. We, we don't want people under 21 in, in the on premises. Thank you. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Sure. Um, I just want to clarify that when our detectives showed up, they used your scanners and those scanners came up as fake. I mean, those IDs came up as fake. Is that correct, detective? That's in the police report. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so what do you think happened there? One, one, yeah. Um, well, it's a possibility that, the, that Mr. Cal had another ID also because when, when they were all their IDs passed through the scanner to say that they were valid okay. when they entered. Okay, um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon. Um, does your scanner keep a log of scans? Yes, and 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 they went through the. They could see that the the, the ID that he um, that Mr. Cal produced going in that said he was over 21. And uh, I think that the, the, the dormant uh, brought that to your attention, to the officer's attention, yeah? That saying that... Uh, um, Would the log tell us whether it was an, a different ID than that was presented the second time? Uh, should you, yes, yeah. Can you provide that to us? Uh, I can go back into records, yeah, and try to get it. Yeah, when we scanned it, when we scanned it that night, it, it came back fraudulent. So I don't, yeah. I don't know. But is it a possibility that that he had a third ID? He gave he gave us something the uh, fake. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. yeah that, so I'm wondering if the logs would indicate that. Mm -hmm. I just want to get on the record. Do you ID? Do you scan every license? Every license that comes in. Uh, if 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 anybody under thirty that looks under thirty years of age, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, no further questions for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then the board will take this matter under advisement. Okay, thank you. And thank I, I you. get the I'll go back to the, on the records and and um, email that into your your office. The board yes. Office. Yes, feel free to email that to licensingboard at boston.gov. That's the best okay. way to reach us. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Not calling item number 12 on today's agenda, Russian Benevolent Society doing business as Crystal Restaurant slash Garage Room, located at 14 to 20 Linden Street in Alston, dated the incident April 30th, 2022. Assault and battery patron on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Assault by means of a firearm in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 15A, and failure to call police in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Board's Rule 1.14b. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Attorney Kurt Bletzer is present. Um, I have a little trouble, I think, with my with my uh, video. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alex Mazzo as well. Great, thank you. Uh, and who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective Catone. 
Thank you. And other any other individuals with solutions. Yep. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify today? Detective Gallagher, if need be, I want to add that I do not have a copy of the LPV, but uh, I did write the LPV. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Uh, Detective Solucci, is it possible to put your camera back? There we go. Perfect. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Thank you very much. Detective Caton, will you be reading the police report into the record? Uh, yes, sir, I will be. Uh, incident report 222-030-459. At about 2.38 a.m. on April 30th of 2022, uh, officers from District 14 responded to a uh, shots fired call at uh, 20 Linden Street in, in Alston. Um, on their arrival, uh, spoke of witnesses reported here now uh, one shot. Uh, she went on to her porch, the witness, uh, saw, uh, saw a suspect jump into a silver Nissan, no plate description with a uh, black front bumper, uh, stated additional guy jumped in the vehicle and yelled, get the fuck out of here. She observed the uh, garage security uh, standing around and yelling at patrons to get out. She mentioned that the uh, garage has issues every time they host an event. Mentioned the shooting, which happened a few months prior to this incident. Officer spoke to her neighbor, an additional witness. Um, he stated he observed four or five people fighting, claimed he finished his cigarette and was going back into his house when he heard the gunshot. Did not see the gun, only heard the shot. Uh, stated he saw a gold or a silver older model Nissan, no make or model, take a right turn on the Cambridge, uh, and that was about it for the description. Uh, officers did uh, recover a uh, shell casing at that location, and it was submitted into evidence. And that's pretty much uh, all I have right now. Also, there was a, a ring doorbell video recovered from one of the neighbors across the street. At, which has the incident after the fact. Thank you. I see a there, there seems to be a supplemental report that's also part of the record. Um, will that be read in as well? Um, supplemental. I think that was written by uh, Sergeant Gallagher. I can read it into, I can read the report if you want me to. No, uh, so, the supplemental report is uh, do, 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 do. We responded to uh, 20 Linden Street uh, as a result of this incident. Um, the original incident was authorized uh, by uh, PO Andrew Kelly. Um, in uh, responding, officers spoke to witnesses who heard a single gunshot, then observed the car speeding off towards Cambridge Street. Uh, witnesses reported seeing garage security members yelling at patrons to leave. A uh, second witness reported seeing four to five patrons fighting. And uh, yeah, so the, uh, the video uh, well, witnesses reported seeing two males arguing with the female, one pulling out a firearm and firing into the ground. Uh, staff members also stated they did not uh, call for police after this incident. And it said uh, during detectives inspection of this license premise, um, they spoke with manager Alex Shapiro, who was working that evening. Uh, Mr. Shapiro stated that there was no incidents inside the club, that he was unaware of the shots fired outside the club or any altercations in the park lot on Linden Street. Uh, Mr. Shapiro uh, reported that the owner and one of his managers uh, security company uh, Mary God Protective Services were present at the garage on that evening as well. Uh, Sergeant Detective Slucci and myself uh, spoke with Mr. Shapiro at length about what they needed at the garage as far as camera coverage, employees, logs, and ID scanner information. So as a result of this incident that took place on 4-30-2022, uh, uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued a license premise inspection notice 
043320 uh, to the garage for assault and battery on a patron. Patron assault by means of a dangerous weapon, a firearm, and fit failure to call the police. And that's it. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, Attorney Bletzer, would you like to address the alleged incident? Please, Detective Catone, if I can ask you a couple of questions, please. Yes. Was there was there fo was there follow up investigation with the employees of the security uh, company that was working at the garage that night? Yes, there was. And uh, we okay. requested uh, sur uh, surveillance uh, video uh, from a Joe Sweeney. Um, I requested it uh, multiple times in person, uh, text message, it, um, and I have yet to receive this video. Did you speak with the uh, security guards that were on staff that night? No, I did not. So nobody has any indication whether, whether or not these individuals that were on Linden Street came from the garage, correct? Uh, I was not on scene that night, no, when this incident took place. Okay. But it, on the ring yeah. doorbell video that we have, it's it clearly, you can, uh, it shows the uh, people that work for the garage um, trying to get people out of that location in a hurried manner. After shots were fired? Yes. Okay, but the shots were fired out on Linden Street, not in the parking lot, correct? It's on Linden Street, right? Uh, so you have an entrance, there's a driveway that goes right into the garage, and it's right in front of that location, yep. right in front of the, uh, their business. Uh, but, the cow, but the cow is actually on Linden Street across the street, correct? Yes. Okay. And that night, did anybody look at any video from the police department at the uh, at on site? Excuse me. Did anybody that night look at any video um, from the garage establishment? No, there was. Uh, they were not able to view video from the uh, the garage establishment. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't understand what he's saying. So I do. I do know. That's that's better now. Oh no! So I'm sorry, detective. I was just saying the 911 call. The 911 call, um, as far as we know, came from several neighbors. Correct. Yes, I'm assuming it came from the neighbors that called it in. It didn't come from the, okay. uh, the garage itself. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. I may, um, yeah, if I may, just on behalf of the garage. Um, Obviously, the, the, the security guards should have called when they saw anybody firing a gun, whether they came from our building or not. So when they came back into the building to tell the manager what they had, what had happened out there, the police officers were pretty much at the door at the same time. We haven't been able to determine, and I don't know if I haven't seen the video, so I don't know whether these guys were in or were not in the garage at the time. Um, but for purposes of the board's uh, information, the garage has no plans to reopen um, at this point. They're going to develop that parcels being developed, and they they're not going to uh, they're not going to reopen the establishment at this time or in the future. Thank you. I just have a, a couple of clarifying questions. Um, Mr. Matov, have you given um, Boston Police the video they've been looking for since this incident? Um, I will follow up with the Joe Sweeney. Uh, he is the one who is usually in direct contact with police now and for the past 15 years that we 
had this uh, uh, any communication with the police uh, department. I will follow up on that uh, to this point. I'm not sure if he has any transferred any footage yet. You're not sure if he is. Well, I'm going to just ask our uh, detective um, Katone to respond. You haven't received any video. Yeah, no, we have we have not received any video, and this is the issue. Is um. We'll speak to one person and they defer to another person and that person defers to another person. And it's it's just an ongoing issue. It's like they're not cooperating with our investigation. Well, that's what it appears to be. And, and I understand it's your closing. It's frustrating. It's yeah, frustrating. I understand, I understand you're closing, Mr. Matov, but that does not change your responsibilities. Um, I understand and the child will follow this license to the new owner. So I urge you to, uh, once you wrap up this hearing, to figure out who at your establishment can get the video over to Boston Police by our vote on Thursday. Understood. Uh, very frustrating to me. Um, members of the licensed premise unit, myself as chair, um, the local, um, I think uh, Sergeant Salucci was there, the captain was there. We spent over an hour with you at your licensed premise before we allowed you to reopen. And this incident happened within hours. And whether or not you're responsible for it, you had a duty to cooperate with the police and also had a duty to have a 24 hour person on, on, um, on call. And it's my understanding that no one could get in touch with anyone um, until at least the next day or the day after. It's also my understanding that you did not install the extra police camera that Detective Fernandez asked you to install that day and we allowed you to open. And it's it's infuriating to me as a chair that you did not cooperate with Boston Police. Uh, well. Uh, uh, uh... We did, we did cooperate. We did have uh, order of cameras, additional cameras and everything that was supposed to be done. And historically, we always cooperated. Uh, there was never an incident that we did not. We couldn't uh, get in touch with you, the 24 hour number you supplied to us. I took time out of my busy schedule and went out there. We walked away, we walked around with you. We, I thought we had an understanding and it's, it's not the case. Detective Catone and Sergeant Salucci are telling us today that their investigation has been hindered because they have not been able to get this video from you. Not to um, mention- uh, 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 Again, uh, nobody has been in touch with me directly about not being able to obtain it. We had given the usual course of, uh, um, of uh, information flow uh, with what we usually had. Um, Attorney Blesser, uh, have you heard anything from the District 14? Have they asked you of anything or reported any difficulty of obtaining any information? I have not spoken with anybody. We, 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 we shouldn't have to speak to your attorney. Uh, the business itself should be providing us with the security footage immediately. Uh, we, I, 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 yes, I do realize it, sir. Uh, uh, but yet you have been working with the same person on, again, I, I need to follow up on that. I apologize, I will not make any further statements. Yeah. Alex, we'll follow up, we'll follow, I'll follow up with the video folks. And I'll get I in don't touch think with you can appreciate how, how distressing it is to me as chair of the board that after spending um, an afternoon at your licensed premise, you told us that you were planning on developing it and you wanted to make some money for the summer, that you failed to cooperate within days after us allowing you to reopen. It doesn't sound like you had public safety on the forefront of your mind, but you had making money on the forefront of your mind. So I would like you to really take this seriously and to get the police the video that they've been looking for since May 1st. We will absolutely do before we vote on Thursday, as in Hello. today. It's infuriating that you're before me again on something like this. Mr. Nope. Curry? I will. I will. Oh. It's fine, um, it's fine. I just wanna second the chair's um, comments fully and I wanna repeat, um, brought this up the last time from my perspective, um, cooperation is more than just being responsive. Um, it's to work together. Um, I, I told you I expected proactive uh, efforts on your part with regards to these. I said it very specifically. Um, so to have you here saying you're, you cooperated is absolutely ridiculous. So that's all I have to say. Um, uh, I, I'd like to apologize to District 14 and uh, to the board. Uh, and uh, I realized that uh, there were mistakes made as well, even though we have not confirmed where the shots were made out of, but uh, the, the newly hired, the security and company, the, everybody sorry, went sir, through the process. Considering, um, sir, considering the circumstances about what just happened in reopening, I, I find it 
ridiculous again that you're calling them mistakes. These, these seem like, um, you know, choices on your part and your staff. So I don't accept that. Thank you. They have, uh, uh, nevertheless, I do apologize. And we have made a decision based on that of uh, not to not to be open again. Commissioner yeah. Saxon, anything from you? No, just expressing uh, disappointment. Nothing further. Thank you. Um, Attorney Bletzer, if we could have something in writing as well about the garage's plans uh, not to reopen or what that looks like for the future of this licensee, um, the board would appreciate that. And to echo Chairman yes. Joyce, um, that we, we do expect some record of cooperation or turning over video um, to D14 prior to the board's vote on Thursday. Absolutely. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything further on, on this item from the board? Okay, with that, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a second call. We had two that we uh, need a second call on very quickly. First item number five. Is there anybody here present from Belarus, Colombia? Yes, yeah, me. Oh, great. Could you please uh, identify yourself? Fernay Pedagnes. Sorry, what was your name one more time? Fernay, F-E-R-N-E-Y. Fernay, great. And your last name? Pedagnes. P as in Peter, E-R-E-A-N-E-C. Pedagnes, great. Thank you very much. Um, we have already had the uh, police record read into, uh, their police report read into the record. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, we've already had the police report read into the record. If you could just briefly tell the board um, your, your story of the alleged incident. I wasn't there that day, but I spoke to uh, the manager who was there, which was Maddie. Um, basically, what, what happened was we had a problem with the, with the security guard, which she's no longer with us. There was a, a problem with her, an incident with her boyfriend or something like that. And then there was uh like a lot of chaos outside and then the machine broke to do the atm so we had people in and out um going to the bank because we have three atms on the corner i really don't understand what happened with the with them counting the people because they they were counted outside not even inside there's plenty of businesses right there so i i really don't know what the violation was for they said there was more people inside than what it was but i i I couldn't like I, I could say I wasn't there, but I didn't understand what 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 the why they were even targeting me as go why not count the people inside, but you're counting them when they're outside. Outside, it's so hard to count people when they're outside. That's why that's what it, I read on the on the on the report. Are you aware that the night before, eight to ten police vehicles had to show up because there was a problem dispersing people in a fight outside your establishment? It wasn't outside my establishment. It was on the street. It it wasn't it wasn't with us. Okay. They, we, yeah, because we, I don't know what happened, but we even locked our gate because we didn't have nobody inside. So we locked our gate. We don't know what it was. I guess one of the patrons called the police. There was a fight outside, but it wasn't. It didn't have nothing to do with us. Okay. And Thank that's you. why. And just just for the record, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Cut you off. Go ahead. Go ahead. And just for the record, you could ask the officers. Now what I do is. I sit outside and my securities, I have two securities, they are outside telling everybody, you got to clear the street. You got to clear the sidewalk. We don't want nobody in the sidewalk. If you stay on the sidewalk, you're not coming back in in the establishment. And you can you can corroborate that with the officers because we've been doing a great job with that after that incident because we don't want this happening no more. Okay, thank you. Um, I have no further questions. Commissioner Steele? For me, thank you. Another. Yeah, well, if, I, if I may, mm -hmm. go ahead, Lieutenant. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm previously sworn, but uh, just uh, I viewed the body camera and I just had a little difficulty uh, downloading it. But the officer actually stands outside, directly outside the bar, and counts uh, counts the um, the patrons leaving the establishment. It's not counting people on the street; it's counting people exiting the door. And he counts them out one, one, you know, one by one on his body camera. And I'm trying to obtain that body camera to furnish it to the board. Thanks, Lieutenant. 
if just for the record, the people that were out, there was people coming in and out. As he said it. There was people coming in and out. We had we had the um. Uh, from the people um getting their money because we didn't. The machine was not working that day. The ATM or the the whatever that because we didn't have no internet. So people were trying to pay their bills. I'm sorry, getting here. Thank you. I think the chair was on mute. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Did you have any further questions? I do not. No. Thank you. And no further questions from the board. The board will take this under advisement. Thank you, Mr. Brownias, for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have an excellent day. You too. And uh, one more second call. Is there anybody present for Aguedas Corporation, uh, Bohemios in East Boston? That that would be for, for my... Uh, yes, I, I could do that. Why did they have an incident? It, yes, there is a violation for them as well, and they were served, but we're not present for it. Uh, there was a violation for them. Yeah, we'll have to take a second call. They were served. They signed for it. Uh, we'll we'll have to um, uh, follow up with them to to reschedule on the the next available date that they can make. Please, because I don't think they were aware of it. Do you have, okay, do we have the right contact person? Or do, do you work do you do you with them or something? Excuse me? I wanna make sure we have the right person He's contact. my brother-in-law. He's my brother-in-law. It's more serious than overcrowding, so we wanna make sure they're aware of it. You should have your brother-in-law call the office today and we'll make sure he's aware of how to reschedule. I will, I'll let him know. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you all. These are all of the items before the board today. So thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Thank you.